Rage. Rage. Rage was one of the most disappointing, dull, and disastrous games of last week. But it didn't have to be. I mean, these guys made Doom for Christ's sake. And Rage isn't too terribly different. Both games are over-the-top, violent shooters that don't take themselves terribly seriously. I guess it has a lot to do with the environment the games were made in and what kind of competition they were up against. And what's weird is that Rage isn't all bad. It's a totally playable game, but God, it's just so bland. More than anything else, Rage's release reveals how risky the big-budget FPS business actually is. For all we complain about brown, boring, derivative shooters dominating the market, Rage showed that this isn't always the case. The game bombed, and id bet a lot on assuming its success. I, for whatever my opinion's worth, think a lot of the problems had to do with the state of the industry at the time, as well as the state of the company itself. Compared to Doom, Rage is a much more derivative and uncreative bit of work. For all their similarities, they stand at almost opposite ends of their genre. Historic. Context. For starters, Doom was a cultural product instead of a corporate one. The first-person shooter genre was still in its awkward first years and hadn't yet had any breakout, genre-defining success stories like Doom. The year was 1993 and everyone was pretending to be depressed in a marketing-friendly way. Dude, I don't know. My parents don't want me to keep listening to heavy metal and abusing animals, but that's like my new identity. We're rising against the expectations of society and playing hockey on the roof because I just don't agree with our socially irrelevant baby boomer world. Think about it. It was in this environment of heavy metal and violent entertainment that Doom grabbed the Space Marines from Aliens, the art from Dungeons and Dragons, the font from Metallica, and the music from Pantera to create the most violently entertaining product of all time, Doom. And what's funny is that all these kitschy shock aesthetics actually add to Doom's gameplay. After all, the core mechanic is you staring down the barrel of a gun, relentlessly killing hundreds upon hundreds of living things over and over again. Is there no better way to shave off the moral weight of the situation by making the bad guys be demons from hell? Is there no more visually satisfying way for them to blow up? The game is over the top and gratuitous to a degree that's almost comical. After a few hours, it's impossible to be scared by this stuff. I mean, it's just silly. Alright, are you ready for this shit? Oh, I'm totally ready. <laughs> Fuck you, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. oh, this is terrible. And the guys behind it knew that. Story synopsis. Scientists on Mars unleash a portal to hell. Demons spew out near the only guy with enough balls left to blow them all up. Brilliant! Later on, there's something about the demons kidnapping your pet bunny. And the final boss is the game developer. By the end of the second game, you've blown up hell itself, so where do all the bad people go when they die? I don't know, and neither did the guys making this game. They didn't care about fluff like story and artistic integrity. They just wanted to make a damn fine shooter, and all the artistic responsibility, or lack thereof, had to support that one primary goal. Which is funny, because the guy who authored the original Doom design docs wanted a more sophisticated game with RPG elements and more of an emphasis on story and puzzles. In. Point is, they ended up editing a lot of Doom down to make the final product a real pure, bare-bones shooting experience. And that final product is fucking great! Compare that to Rage. Instead of being a derivative work of 90s pop culture, it's a derivative work of late 2000s shooting games. The whole setup feels like something I've played before. It's this post-apocalyptic world that you rise up in and it's this twisted version of the reality you used to know and you really don't know what to expect. There's mutants, and there's bandits, you know, and there's groups of settlers trying to survive. Oh wait, that's the wrong game. But seriously, no. The creators behind Rage didn't look very far for inspiration. Instead of making a game out of music genres and abstract pop sensibilities, they made a game out of other post-apocalyptic shooter games. We've played Borderlands and Fallout to death already. On the other hand, whenever something even superficially like Doom comes out, everyone praises it like the second coming of Charles Bronson. Rage mixes genres in an attempt to appeal to general audiences, but also in an attempt to fit into a market saturated with mixed genre blockbusters. It was a safe investment, borrowing elements from so many other big games of the past decade, and it made a lot of creative compromises to get the job done. It plays like a poor man's version of Call of Duty, Fallout, and Borderlands all rolled into one. It reminds me of a time back in the early 2000s when GTA 3 had just come out and everyone was ripping off that. If GTA could slap bad shooting onto bad driving and put them in a gritty open world, then why couldn't something like True Crime, Streets of LA, or The Getaway get away with it too? I guess it's because they kind of missed the subtleties of Grand Theft Auto's design. Its primary draw was the player-driven chaos and how the game managed 
managed and controlled that. They created a fictional city that encouraged you to go wild in. The whole structure of the game involved you progressively unlocking more and more tools for creating your own fun, and the missions you had to play acted as objective-driven tutorials for what you could do in your own time. It wasn't a driving or shooting game, it was a sandbox game, built from the ground up to manage the possibilities of player-driven chaos. Games are enclosed systems of interrelated mechanisms that work best when every element complements one another, not contradicts one another. Rage is a sandbox game. Well, kinda. It's a first-person shooter RPG with the sandbox overworld, and you drive a car on your way to the shooting, and you also shoot with the car. So it's car combat too, and by the end of this mess you actually don't spend a majority of the game first-person shooting, so I guess that makes Rage a semi-shooter car combat sandbox RPG. Gameplay mechanics. On the other flip of the dick is Doom, which is ridiculously focused on being one huge power trip of an FPS. Your dude runs at nearly 60 miles an hour, and even at the hardest difficulty, he can absorb like 11 shots and still keep up the pace. Enemies die fast and are poured out at you in large amounts, and since most of them either melee or shoot slow-moving projectiles, the game actually plays more like a top-down shmup than a modern first-person shooter. You're fast enough to have a large window to dodge their attacks, and ammo count is rarely an issue. You just hold the fire button down while nimbly strafing around their attack spreads. Doom was working with gameplay ideas that were old and reliable. This is how a lot of 90s shoot 'em ups play, but Doom puts it in the first person, adding directional depth and nixing the scrolling background, giving you even more control over the action than the genre staples of the time. It's fast, it's active, and it gets you pumped. You've got this adorable midi Pantera blaring away in the background and flickering rooms of pixel gorillas to destroy. And the music, it's so good! Brilliant! Point is, I can play Doom till the cows come home. I hate describing things as fun, but goddammit, Doom is fun! You can put so much energy and motion into playing the game, and it gives you the kind of rewarding output that Rage simply doesn't. That's not to say Rage isn't fun, or whatever. Well, it could have been. About 15 minutes after hitting the start button and watching all this stuff, you finally get a chance to actually take a pistol out and play the- Whoa! Look at this! Listen to that! Oh god, that's terrible, but so, so right. Look at how they dance and jump around like all the extras in Joe Lieberman's favorite movies. But wait, it's over already? That was only, like, five minutes. And so now I gotta go back and drive home and... Okay... So shooting stuff in Rage looks great and feels great, but it doesn't necessarily play great. And this is because of a lot of modern design trends being haphazardly thrown into the game without a lot of thought or finesse applied to them. Trends like regenerating health means that your mistakes no longer have long-term consequences. Means that the map maker no longer has to worry about getting you to look for health packs and stuff. At least Rage has loot to encourage exploration, though it's actually kind of problematic. More on that later. But in other games that automatically regenerate your health, I don't really need to care about navigating and understanding the environment that contextualizes the shooting. I kind of miss that. And I also kind of miss the winning by attrition quick save battles. You get a feeling of accomplishment for winning battles that you mathematically shouldn't have won, for slinging yourself against overwhelming odds again and again until you finally slip through, or if you're actually good at the game, or going through a level completely unharmed. And Rage, getting blasted in the chest by a shotgun doesn't mean anything. In the short term, it's easily cured just by standing still. So you've got forgiving health mechanics and shallow level design. In this situation, the developer's strategy for ramping up tension is to make your dude have a very low maximum HP. You can die in a flash, without seeing it coming or have any time to react. The regenerating health system entirely restructures the combat mechanics from Doom. After standing still for a few seconds, your character is good to go. Your health count in Rage is a formula of dividing damage density over time rather than subtracting from a large pool of HP points. And since just one shot will jelly up your screen to near death, you spend most of your time in combat pasted in front of blurry wall textures for cover. And since your movement is comparatively hampered, it's hard to escape from cover. But these aren't the only reasons why you have to hide and stay put in games like Rage. It also has to do with the kind of weapons the game uses. To broadly categorize them, bad guys in Rage shoot you with hitscan weapons, and the bad guys in Doom shoot you with projectile weapons. If you've played a lot of sci-fi themed games, you know the drill. This stuff usually means the difference between guns that shoot bullets and guns that shoot something glowy and slow. You know, some weapons just teleport bullets underneath your crosshair, and others actually create a physical object that floats through the map for a bit. And it completely changes the mechanics of first-person combat. When you're using the plasma rifle and rocket launcher in Doom, 
you have to strategically time and lead your shots. And most of the weapons function mechanically different from one another. They aren't just different variations of laser pointers that wobble when you click. Each one legitimately changes the rules of how you play the game. Most enemies almost exclusively shoot the slow projectiles, and you have a big window of time to dodge them. You don't have to run and hide. You're supposed to stay mobile and constantly circle strafe in and out of the action. In Rage, you have such a lower health maximum and can't dodge bullets like you can in Doom. Getting hit is unavoidable, and getting hit twice means Emergency. User death imminent. And since you move pretty slowly, you gotta stay behind cover, and occasionally teleport bullets towards the bad guys that don't have regenerating health. You just gotta keep it up long enough for the persistence of your regenerating health to win out over their non-regenerating health. You see? Doom is run and gun. Rage is stop and pop. And stop and pop is fucking boring. A lot of the little design decisions that create stop and pop shooting was meant to compensate for the limited aiming speed of console analog sticks versus computer mice, encouraging the player to spray out suppressing fire while repetitively getting little opportunities to line up more individually precise shots. And this is good and all, but it doesn't really feel right in Rage. In Gears of War, everyone is a really hard target. Same deal in Halo. But in Rage, enemies have a lot more help than usual, but not really enough to justify the wanton spraying that you do in those other games. Unarmored early game enemies take two whole headshots, which is kind of unfortunate since ammo is scarce till the mid game. And all the guns have a pretty small magazine size. It seems like Rage wants me to be conservative and shoot with precision, but like a lot of modern shooters, your dude just can't shoot straight. Default spray radius is big enough to send bullets in the general direction of enemies, but not small enough to reliably hit them. You don't get actual shots until pressing, you know, the iron sights button. Which is another useful tool for compensating for the slow aiming speeds of analog sticks. Thing is, even when I'm holding down the button and moving, I still can't get out accurate shots. I'm taking the time and trouble to do this right, but the game still isn't reliably connecting bullets to my pointer. I gotta be standing perfectly still. And this isn't a horror game. I'm not playing Resident Evil. I'm playing a fucking id game. I'm playing a violent and over-the-top post-apocalyptic shooter from the same company that made Doom. Playing Rage just makes me want to play Doom more. In that game, your projectiles go where you tell them to go. No muss, no fuss. Move around as much as you you want. Your aiming efforts won't be artificially hampered. I mean, these mechanics work in a lot of games. I actually kind of like how the Halo games do all of these things I'm nitpicking about. But those games embrace these mechanics and aren't hindered by it. Plus, they've got way more of a story to tell. <laughs> I gotta take it down, take 